and my hair just cut it and washed it. I wanted to talk about how to get your home sold as an agent, as a listing agent, how to take a listing and make sure it sells, make sure it doesn't expire. I've taken several, I've, I've taken a lot of expired listings now and I see like this clear, con this clear contrast between a house that sells and a house that expires and that I end up taking over and getting it sold. It's this one key differentiator that I've never seen anyone talk about. And I don't think a lot of people understand this because they don't ever get into this position where they take a bunch of expired listings and see what sells a house and what gets a house expired. So today I'm gonna to tell you exactly what this is. And it's not marketing. It has nothing to do with marketing. It's two things. I'm gonna tell you the second thing in a bit, but the first thing is price coaching. A lot of agents, most agents, will be told a price from their seller and they'll be like, okay, yeah, excited to get a new listing. I'm gonna post about this and talk to them, tell my friends about this and I'm gonna look cool on, in the, on uh, social media. And they have no idea how to have this price conversation with the seller. So even if the seller's overpriced, the agent's not gonna say anything about it. He's gonna take the listing because he needs it because he doesn't do many transactions. The average agent takes two to three transactions a year. Actually, last year, the average agent, 50% of agents did one transaction last year. They're all desperate for deals. And so the average agent is just going to take whatever listing comes their way. So this makes a lot of sense. They, they just take the listing. They have no idea how to coach their seller with the price of their home, and they get it expired. That's basically every expired ever. Every expired, almost every expired ever is a result of not properly price coaching. No listing agent is going to say this, but really that's our job. The biggest job as a listing agent is to communicate properly with the seller and have them clearly understand why their home is worth a certain amount, why buyers would probably not want to pay their price for it and setting realistic expectations, proper expectations with the seller. That's a listing agent's number one job. If you can do that properly, it's gonna sell. No amount of marketing is gonna get a home sold. No matter how great your marketing is, it's not gonna get your home sold. When was the last time you brought, when was the last time you bought something overpriced because the marketing was so great? Well, I guess it's possible, you know, like Louis Vuitton or whatever. But in real estate, people aren't going to pay tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars over asking price when they can just not pay that price. They'll just put in a lower offer because there's no other competing offers. So that's number one. That's price coaching. Number two, this is the reason I sell, I want to say every one of my listings, I've had two expire, but that's because they were just you can't you couldn't build on those pieces of land that I listed. I didn't know that. Um, but I price coached and I did the second thing with them. So it would have sold if it was buildable. Price floor. You need to know what your seller's price floor is. So again, if you combine these two things, you're gonna sell all of your listings. So I always tell my sellers, and, and before you can find their price floor, you need to be make sure that you convey you need to make sure that they 100% trust you. And so you need to drop language and tell them no, uh, tell them things like, hey, my goal here is to sell your property for as high as possible, okay? They need to know that you are on their side. They need to be clear that your fiduciary duty lies with them. With that being said, you need to also know what their lowest dollar amount they would take. What's their bottom line? What's their price floor? Because um, when, I, when me and my seller agrees on a list price, I tell them, hey, um, this is probably the range of what your property will sell for. Now, with that being said, what is the lowest you would take? In the event that it doesn't sell like this at this rate, at this price, in the event it doesn't sell at this price, what's the lowest you would take? They'll tell you what the lowest they would take is. And in my head, I go, okay, wow. All right, so of course, I'm not gonna tell anyone. Nobody knows what the price floor is except me and the seller. Um, it's my, it's in my best interest to get this property sold for as high, high as we can. But because I know the price floor, I know, okay, 
well, we'll go on the market for this much, which is a uh, fair market, or maybe a little below to create a bidding war. But I know in the event that it doesn't sell for this, it'll definitely sell for this. It's definitely gonna sell for this. And this is their bottom line. This house is definitely gonna sell. It's gonna get sold eventually. It's just a matter of time and, and price reductions. So that's how I know all my listings will sell. And if their price floor is like, just on the just with their price floor is pretty much the fair market value i'll know that like you know maybe if uh maybe it's a high price point and we, we just it's like we just need to go a little below maybe i'll i'll ask the buyer's agent to be like hey look let's just put in a little bit of both of our commissions into this deal so that we can um, we can make this work financially for the seller or, or the buyer and get this thing done. So I, I have some like um, plan Z strategies there, but I always want to know like after price coaching and having them understand what fair market value is, and we're gonna we are going to list at fair market, or at least they know that they need to drop to this or below. I also know what their bottom line is. And if, if, they, if they can't understand what their house is worth off of the price coaching, and if their price floor is way too high, I will not take the listing. I won't. It's just a waste of time. It's a waste of time and money. I, I don't want to do either of those things. Why would you take a listing if you know it's not going to sell? It's because you're desperate. It's because you don't have deals. It's because you know if you say no to this, you don't know where your next deal is coming from. And that's a terrible place to be. Actually, if you want to take one to four new listings a month, I opened up the Conversion Academy for everyone. It's open enrollment and it's a cheap monthly price. So click on the link below for the Conversion Academy and, and, and watch the first video that's inside. It's going to show you exactly what is provided inside the Conversion Academy and it's going to change your life because I, I remember, I remember how hard it used to be to find listings. I remember how hard it used to be to win over the seller. I remember how hard it used to be. It was very difficult to do this. It, it it took a lot of accumulation of different skills and ways to communicate and listing presentations and sales skills. It took a lot of accumulation and layering of these different skills from different sources and different mentors. And I've provided everything that I know within the Conversion Academy. So if you want to hop on, click the link below. If you want to join the group coaching, you'll have to sign up for the wait list on conversionacademy.com. Um, and... And yeah, that's that's pretty much all I have for you. So I cut my own hair. I, I've been cutting my own hair ever since uh, 2013. So what is that? 11 years I've been cutting my own hair. Um, I My hair is like this because I tonight I cut my hair. I cut my hair every week. I, I've been cutting my hair every single week ever since 2013. So um, I just took a shower and my, hair, and my hair is just dried like this. Actually... When I when I cut my hair and I get out of the shower, I put on this I put on this thing so that it dries like this and it's not all over my all over my face. So if you haven't noticed, I've been posting a lot on my Instagram and on my YouTube. Well, more than I used to on my YouTube. I, I used to post six videos a year on my YouTube. Now I now I've been just kind of just posting whatever. And uh, this is a signal to you and to me that. I'm starting to not care <laughs> so, and I'm just willing to, and that's a good thing because I'm just willing to post whatever on YouTube and just like crap it out. You know, I, it's all good content. I, I, I believe this is probably the best listing content probably on YouTube. I don't know. I, I assume who's talking about this. Who's giving you this kind of like juice. Who's giving you this kind of sauce. Um, but yeah, I'm getting a lot more comfortable on social media. I used to just like be like, oh, but it has to be kind of perfect. It has to be, it has to be really good. No, it doesn't. And I'm, I'm over it and I'm just going to start posting. So, um, if you may, hey, if you made it to this point, I really want to know who you are because, wow, this, this last minute or so was kind of dumb. If you made it to this point, I want you to comment down below. Wow. You've been cutting your hair for 11 years. And I'll know, I'll know who made it to this retarded rant. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.